What's going on, guys? This is Tyler Brock from TWM MMA. So, UFC Fight Night, uh, live at Long Island, I believe. I can't remember exactly where it's at. I probably should have had that up. My bad. Uh, Long Island, New York. That's all it says. I'm not sure exactly uh, what stadium it's at. It just says Long Island. What city? I don't know. But, uh, by the way, before I start this video, I would like to thank everyone for the support I had on the week one of the Contender Series videos. Uh, I think I had 100, I'm had up to 150 views, which is absolutely insane. I thank you so much. I didn't think it would get that much support, which actually really shocked me. But uh, I'll certainly have a week three. Sorry, I did not have a week two up, but I'll certainly have a week three. Week two is, by the way, a f freaking amazing. So anyway, with all that out of the way, let's get started. I'll be doing the top four fights, the entire main card of the UFC fight night. Uh, I can't remember what number it is. Uh, let's start with the first fight on the fight. on the. Uh, it's on Fox, actually. It's on Fox, not on uh, FS1. And the prelims are on Fox, too. There's a lot of great fights on this card, by the way. One thing, one fight that I'm actually looking forward to is Ryan LaFlair. Versus Alex Oliveira, that's on the Fox uh, prelims. And then a, a bunch of other good fights, uh, like uh, Rafael Natal versus Eric Anders. Lots of great fights on the Fox early prelims, but I'm just doing just doing in-depth on the top four fights. So let's start with the first fight. Number four ranked Jimmy Rivera versus number, number nine ranked Thomas Almeida. Number four ranked Jimmy Rivera. He is from the United States. He has a record of 20 wins and one loss. 20% of his victories are by knockout slash DKO, 10% by submission, and 70% by decision. Number nine ranked Thomas Almeida. He is from Brazil. He has a record of 21 wins and one loss. 73% uh, by knockout, 18% by submission, and 5% by decision. Thomas Almeida is three inches taller and has a two inch reach advantage. Let's start with number nine ranked Thomas Almeida. He has a record of five and one in the UFC with four performance of the night bonuses and one fight of the night bonus. He's got he went 20 and 0 before fighting Cody Garbrandt, which that fight did not go his way. But Cody Garbrandt is now the current bantamweight champion. Uh, he rebounded uh, his, again after his loss against Cody Garbrandt uh, with a performance of the night victory over Albert Morales. He has a KO victory over Brad Pickett, which is very impressive. Uh, he has a brown belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and has four submission victories, two arm bars, a guillotine, and a rear naked choke. But 16, 16 of his 20 victories were by knockout. Six, and that, add, to add to that, 16 were first round finishes. Uh, 14 of his last 15 victories were by knockout. And he's a legacy FC 135 pound champion. Uh, he's fighting number four ranked Jimmy Rivera. He is from the United, or uh, he has a record of four and zero in the UFC. Uh, he defeated Marcus Brimage, uh, Pedro Munoz, Iriel Contra, and Uriah Faber in those four fights, which is very impressive. And his last victory over Uriah Faber, current Hall of Famer and former WEC champion, one of the greatest bantamweights and just one of the greatest martial artists ever to to live on this planet. Uh, his only loss was a split decision vic split decision loss in his second ever MMA fight. Since then, he rebounded, winning 19 fight or 18 fights in a row. Uh, he's got four knockout victories and two submission victories. Uh, of those two uh, submission victories, one was a rear naked choke and one was a triangle choke. So he's definitely trying to push this fight all the way to the to the decision. While uh, Thomas Almeida is trying to finish the fight. Uh, he won the new breed uh, fighting championships belt. The next fight on the Fox on the Fox main card. Number twelve ranked Patrick, Patrick Cummins versus number thirteen ranked Dion Vilante. Uh, number twelve ranked Patrick Cummins. He is from the United States. He has a record of nine wins and four losses. Forty four percent were by knockout, twenty two percent by submission, and thirty three percent by decision. Number thirteen ranked Dion Vilante. Uh, he, he's from the United States. He has a record of 15 wins and 7 losses. 67% were by knockout, 13% by submission, and 20% by decision. Uh, let's start with number 13 ranked Gia, uh, Dion Violante. Uh, he's got a record of 5 wins and 5 losses in the UFC with 4 fight of the night bonuses, and he also went 3-2 and two in strike force. Uh, he went 2-3 and three in, his last four, in his last 5 fights, but 4-3 and three in his last 7 fights. He has a long career in college football and college wrestling, so he's a dual sport athlete, which is uh, very impressive, especially at the co college, collegiate level. He trains out of Sarah Longo, uh, a longtime training partner with Chris Weidman. Uh, he's a blue belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and he has got ten knockout victories and two submission victories, and both of them were rear, were rear naked chokes. His last loss, however, did not go his way. Uh, I believe he got TKO'd by Shogun Hua. Uh, he's fighting number twelve ranked Patrick Cummins. Uh, he's got a record of five wins and four losses in the UFC. His losses were to Daniel Cormier, Ovin St. Preux, Glover Teixeira, and Little Nog in Brazil. So. His four losses in his career were against very high-ranked opponents, and against a little knock in Brazil. That's very difficult to do. Uh, he, his last victory was over John Blockwich in uh, at UFC at UFC 210. I believe that was back in 
February? Shoot, I can't remember exactly when it was. Uh, that was his first win, first victory since 2015. He, he was a 2004 NCAA runner-up in wrestling. Uh, so he's got four knockout victories and two submission vi victories, uh, two, one guillotine and one arm triangle choke. All right, the co-main event of the Fox main card is a fight I was ve I'm very much looking forward to. Number ten ranked Dennis Bermudez versus number twelve ranked Darren uh, the Damage Elkins. Uh, number twelve, number ten ranked uh, Dennis Bermudez. He is from the United States. He has a record of seventeen wins and six losses. Twenty four percent of his of his victories by knockout, twenty four percent by submission, and fifty three percent by decision. Uh, he's fighting number 12 ranked Darren Elkins. He's from the United States. He has a record of 23 wins and 5 losses. 39% of his victories are by knockout, 13% by submission, and 48% by decision. He's also 4 inches taller and has a 5 inch reach advantage. Let's start with number 12 ranked Darren Elkins. He's got a record of 12 and 4 in the UFC with w only one performance of the night bonus. Uh, he's on a, riding a four fight winning streak right now and his last fight obviously one of the greatest fights I've ever seen uh, against his fight against uh, Mirsad Bektik came back free, came from behind and that's you know that's how he got the name the damage he can take so much damage and still ca keep coming you know that's he's got a huge fan support obviously behind him after that fight for sure in fact I have right up here I keep uh, a bunch of notes where uh, I keep a bunch of notes of fights that I really really appreciate uh, fights that I was really really excited about one of them right here I'm not sure if you're able to read that is Darren Elkins versus uh, Mirsad Bektik one of the first podcasts I've ever done, and I, that was absolutely insane what happened there, and I still have that stored up there. Uh, I, I kind of have a Hall of Fame, I guess you can call it, for fights that really I've been really excited about. Uh, he's gone 14-4 in his last 18 fights, and he's also uh, he's also gone 11-3 and at featherweight. He's a brown belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and he's got nine knockout victories and three submission victories, a, Va a Von Flu choke, a guillotine choke, and a rear naked choke. He's got 19 takedowns in his last four fights, but didn't land a single one in his last fight against Mirsai Bektik. So recently, he's been utilizing a lot of takedowns. He's facing number 10 ranked Dennis Bermudez. He has gone 9-4 and four in the UFC with two, two performance of the night bonuses, two fight of the night bonus, bonuses, and one submission of the night bonus. He was on a seven-fight win streak from 2012 to 2014. Uh, he's gone two and three in his last five fights, however. His last loss was against Chan Sung Jung, and Chan Sung Jung was out for a very long time, and he came back and looked better than ever against uh, Dennis Bermudez. He's got 9-3 in his last 12 fights, however. Uh, he's got four knockout victories and four submission victories, one rear naked choke, and three... So, sorry, I don't have that written down. I'm, I'm very sorry about that. He was a member of Team Miller on the Ultimate Fighter Season 14, but he lost in the finals. And that was a very exciting season, for those of you that remember that. He was ranked in the top 25 in the NCAA Division I wrestling. All right, the main event. Number 5 ranked Chris Weidman versus number 8 ranked Kelvin Gastelum. This is a, this is a fight that should be the co-main event on a pay-per-view, but we get this for free on Fox. Number 5 ranked Chris Weidman. He is from the United States, the former champion. Chris Weidman, I should, I might add. He's got a record of 13 wins and 3 losses. 46% of his victories are by knockout, 23% by submission, and 31% by decision. Uh, he's fighting number 8 ranked Kelvin Gastelum. He's from the United States and also uh, has some heritage from Mexico. Uh, he's got 14-2 and two in the UFC in his career. 43% uh, of his victories are by knockout, 29% by submission, and 29% by decision. Chris Weidman, however, has a whopping 7-inch reach advantage. Let's start with number eight ranked Calvin Gastelum. He has gone eight and two in the UFC with one no contest against Vitor Belfort, which is basically a victory. Uh, he might have po might have tested positive for marijuana, but that's still a victory in my mind. Uh, he's, so aside from that, he's got nine and two in my in my opinion. He's got two performance of the night bonuses and one fight of the night bonus. I'm not going to get into uh, whether marijuana marijuana is a performance enhancing drug, but it's not. Uh, he's only 25 years old, by the way. His losses were to Tyron Woodley and Neil. Neil Magny, the only two losses in his career. Uh, he got he, since then he's demolished the the likes of Johnny Hendricks, Tim Kennedy, and Vitor Belfort. And he's moved up to middleweight recently after missing weight too many times at 170, and proves yet again how how much better a uh, fighter can be at 185 pounds. And he's gonna have to prove that against Chris Weidman if he can handle that weight class. Because Chris Weidman, obviously being the former champion, he's getting thrown with the dogs, and this is a very very high ranked division. Uh, and Calvin Gastelum, you know, being uh, having such a long career at 170, has to really, I, even though he demolished Vitor Belfort and demolished Tim Kennedy, I shouldn't say he demolished Tim Kennedy, but uh, he, he he put the put the hammer down on him for sure. 
Uh, I just have so much respect for Tim Kennedy with everything that he's done, in, uh, not just in the UFC, but in his entire life, especially in his military career. Uh, but he really has to prove it in this next fight against Chris Weidman. And, you know, this is an opportunity for Chris Weidman to, you know, come back. But I'll get to that later. Uh, his move up to middleweight was obviously very impressive. He was the, two, the, he was the ultimate fighter season 17 winner. Uh, and he shocked the world, basically, in this fight against uh, Uriah Hall and just put, put the hammer down on him and really just dominated that fight. He's the 10th planet uh, jiu-jitsu purple belt, and he's got six knockout victories and four submission victories with four rear naked chokes. He's fighting number five ranked Chris Weidman. He's got 9-3 in the UFC with one performance of the night bonus, two fight of the night bonuses, and uh, two knock of the night bonuses, and one submission of the night bonus. He's on a three-fight losing streak, however. Uh, and his last fight against uh, Gegard Mousasi was obviously rooted with controversy. And, you know, you know, uh, the New York Athletic Commission still being new and uh, still being fresh, you know. And it's it's behind from all the other commissions. And just Chris Weidman, he's just caught in a weird uh, predicament. You know, he's from New York. He's the New York guy. But he has to keep on fighting there no matter how many times they, you know, they mess up. And they really messed up big in his fight. Whoa. How did that happen? Um, he wanted to defend his belt. He defended his belt three times in his career. So he was a very dominant middleweight champion. And he, de and he defeated Anderson Silva two times. You know, obviously one was a leg break and the other one was Anderson Silva got silly, dropped his hands and got knocked out. But that was absolutely unbelievable both times that he beat him. Uh, he defeated Leona Machida and Vitor Belfort uh, in his title defenses. And also uh, Anderson Silva one time in his title defense and one time to be to be uh, the become the middleweight champion, but his spin kick against Luke Rockhold, you know he's he was basically dominating that fight in my opinion, and he just th threw a wild spinning kick and it did not go well. He got taken down, he got beat up, got beat up the next round, and that just absolutely changed his career. It, we went from one bad decision to Gegard Mousasi landing a knee that whether it is or isn't legal. It's, it's legal in states like California. But if you take one step over the border to Nevada, it's not. And then if you go to New York, it's not legal. So I can't. I, I don't even want to get started on the, on the unified rules of MMA, but that would, it, it, it's just so confusing exactly what's going on. And, uh, you know, uh, he lost to Yuel Romero. There's no controversy in that. He got almost decapitated by that flying knee. But he's got six knockout victories and three submission victories. A Darce choke, a guillotine choke, and a Kimura. He's won multiple grappling championships. Um, I, I'm not sure if he's actually if he actually holds a belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, but training with Matt Serra, I'm sure he definitely has uh, some experience grappling. So his fight against uh, Gegard Mousasi, uh, obviously there was a misinterpretation of the rules but on uh, Chris Weidman's part. I don't have enough time to go over exactly what happened in that fight. But and exactly give exactly my opinions. But the thing is, though, Chris Weidman was gaming the system, and he can't do that. And that's why the rule is there. I'm actually not sure, because he had both he had both palms down, which is it's very confusing. And you know, it was a split second with Greg Unmersasi picked him up and then kneed him in the head. But Chris Weidman was trying to game the rules, and he was trying to quote unquote fake an injury. You know, Chris Weidman, I love him to death, but that was a mistake on his part. It wasn't Dan Mergliata's fault. It wasn't the Athletic Commission's fault. It was his fault for being in that position. That's my opinion on it. You can debate me if you want. Just go in the comments. and I'm up for every, all opinions, but, you know, that was just kind of, it was just weird, to be quite honest, exactly what happened there. And everything just went wrong. Everything that could have went wrong went wrong in that situation. And then Gegard Mousasi, it's very frustrating that he didn't re-sign with the UFC, but I don't have enough time to get back. I'm not saying it's his fault. Just the whole situation there was, it's it's kind of, I mean, I'm happy for him for signing with Bellator. Obviously, that, in his mind, that was a better decision. It's just frustrating as a fight fan because you want the best fighters to stay in the UFC. That's for that's for sure. And Gegard Mousasi is, is the one of the best. You, there's no denying that. And it's just very frustrating that he couldn't stay with, stay with the UFC and just to see how the, middleweight division plays out with Michael Bisping being on top with uh, Robert Whitaker being the interim champion with Yoel Romero still in the mix even though after losing that last fight uh, and if we just kept Gegard Mousasi you know we got Luke Rockhold it, it's absolutely an unbelievably stacked division if we had Gegard Mousasi stayed in the UFC it, it just uh, just another piece in the puzzle you know what I mean so I try to keep this podcast a little bit short I, I 
It went a little bit long, but anyway, this is Tyler from T1 MMA. Oh, before I before I let let you guys go, uh, my friend Mason Gravit, uh, he wants to be a pilot, and he recently went to this aerospace uh, aerospace camp at uh, University of North Dakota, and he recently started a podcast. It's called Aerospace Talk with Mason. Go look that up and go check that out and, and subscribe to uh, Aerospace Talk with Mason after you subscribe to T1 MMA. So anyway, this is Tyler Brack from T1 MMA, and I'll catch you guys later.